Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about three lies you may have heard about pity which are simply not true and you must ignore. Let me tell you what these lies are first so that if you already know about them you don't need to watch the complete video and you can spend that time on practicing more questions and getting more knowledge and learning new ideas. So the first myth is using backspace reduces your spelling score. The second myth is speaking faster gets you high score in PT speaking. And the third myth is microphone position can actually reduce your score or increase your score in your speaking. In this video, I will tell you why all of them are not true. And I will also give you the reasons why. If you're interested, keep watching. If you're new to this channel, my name is Roman. I'm the founder of Roman PT. We provide online and face-to-face -face classes to people in Melbourne, Australia, as well as people all over the world. You can find more information about our courses and services by going to the link mentioned in the description. And let's start by talking about the first myth or the first lie, that is spelling score can drop if you use backspace. This is simply not true. Using backspace or not using backspace has no impact on your score. And the reason I'm telling you this is I have been to this exam many times and I type really, really bad. Because of that, I have to use backspace many times. If you have been one of my students, you may have seen me typing in the class and perhaps you know that I make a lot of mistakes. And of course, when I make these mistakes, I have to use backspace. So these suggestions of not using the backspace is not going to help you much. If you think you have problem in spelling, fix those problems rather than focusing on the backspace. That's not going to change anything at all. Not just that, actually spelling itself is not that important for your score. Now, if you do not know about this, remember, spelling is assessed in only two question types in your test. And these questions are essay writing and summarized spoken text. Even in these questions, spelling contributes two points per question. Now, you can imagine yourself how important this can be in terms of the overall score. That is the reason why focusing too much on spelling or focusing on backspace, both are not practical. Rather, if you think your spelling is bad, you should start practicing your spelling. You should learn the difference between British and American spelling and make sure that you are familiar with the commonly asked words in your exam and how to spell them. In addition to that, Pearson uses a list of most commonly misspelled words compiled by the Oxford Corpus. You must go through that list and make sure you can spell all the words in that list because these are the words which will be asked in your fill in the blanks and write from dictation. So, from that perspective, you can say that you need to work on your spelling, but simply the score of spelling you get on your scorecard or not using the backspace, both of them are not relevant, are not important for your test. So you should save yourself from this unnecessary stress and rather focus on more important things. The second myth that I have heard many times and I've tried to dispel many times as well is the speed of speaking. You may find people who speak really fast or who are speaking faster to get more score in speaking. And these people will tell you that they saw increase in their speaking score once they started speaking faster. But you'll also find people who will tell you that they spoke naturally and in their normal speed and despite that they were able to get good score. So who is telling you the truth? Actually, both are telling you the truth. And the reason for that is speed has no impact on your score. That is the reason why people who are speaking faster are getting more score and people who are speaking normally or slower are also getting this score. Because the reason we talk about speaking speed is it somehow affects our fluency score. Although fluency is not all about speed, still people who tend to speak faster tend to speak more continuously as they have to focus more on the speed and that's why they tend to be more continuous compared to people who speak slowly as they get more time to think because of which sometimes they don't get the right word and then they slow down or there will be interruptions or hesitation in their speech. Because of this reason, we have had this myth that by speaking faster we get more score, although indirectly it's actually because of the continuity. So that means if you are a person who can speak continuously, although you can't speak faster, it, there is no need to change your speed, there is no need to change your method. One more thing that you need to think about is when you try to speak faster, it compromises clarity. 
Now, I don't need to tell you why, because all of us know that when we try to speak faster, the words become less clear. And because of that, it's difficult to interpret what the person is saying. This can have a negative impact on your overall score because some of the questions in speaking like read aloud or repeat sentence or retell lecture or answer sort question. These questions also contribute to score to other sections. And how much the score is contributed to other section depends on the content and that content depends on the clarity of your answer. And clarity on the other hand depends on how well you pronounce or articulate. That is the reason why simply focusing on a speed to increase your score may actually backfire. And that's why you should be really careful while using this trick. And I would suggest not to use it at all if you know how to speak continuously. Using templates, using a consistent method, or preparing yourself well with past exam questions are actually better strategies to get more score in your speaking by improving your fluency. Now, the third myth is microphone position. You may have heard many stories, many, uh, you may have watched many lessons about microphone positions, and you may have heard from different people that you have to put microphone in this position or that position, or if you put this in this position, you don't get the points, or if you don't put in that position, you don't get the points, and so on. All of them are simply not true. The reason for that is microphone position in itself is not a determining factor in your score unless it compromises the clarity. If your microphone is not close to the sound source, it may compromise the clarity of your sound and there can be a lot of background noise mixed with the original sound. Because of this, during the stage of background noise separation, it can be difficult to separate the background noise from your answer. That can create a problem in interpreting the answer and giving you the score. Because of that, you need to be careful about the microphone position only from the perspective of clarity. But there is nothing like the absolute microphone position which can get you more score. Now, if you are wondering then what is that position, most of the times if the microphone is pointing towards the corner of the mouth, that would be the best position for most of the people. But all of us speak in different ways. We have different intonation patterns. We have different um, volume level or we have different... Uh, methods of dictions and different cadence in our voice. Because of that, the sweet spot might differ. Therefore, it's always a good idea to start with the position of the microphone pointing towards the corner of the mouth and then vary it a little bit to see what is your sweet spot so that you can put the microphone in that particular spot and continue the test. But remember, you do not need to learn about any absolute microphone position. The only position of the microphone that is important for you is the one where you hear your sound the best. So these three myths that I have heard from students many times, using the backspace, speaking faster, and microphone position, all of them are absolute lies. Maybe you do not agree to this, maybe you have had different experiences regarding these things and maybe you want to say something else. If that is the case, write in the comments. Let's get the discussion going and let's find out what people have felt and what people have been through so that we can help each other. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. And if you don't want to miss the videos in the future, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. Until my next video, have a good time and all the best for your upcoming exam.